Um, I decided to put this up because a lot of people don't quite get it. They keep asking me the question, but what do you do? Women inventors, innovators, everything to do with inventions, science, technology, they really haven't quite figured it out. So I thought that perhaps I do need to say a little bit about what I mean and why we do it. But I would say that the root is women, the beauty of creativity, innovation and technology for Africa. Please don't bother to read everything. It's just to prompt me a little. But I would say that if people are really wondering about what invention means and what innovation means, just think about one thing. It creates jobs. If you're successful with inventions and your innovation, you will provide a better quality of life for your community, for yourselves, and for other people. It's not just about entrepreneurship. It's about people's qualities of life. I put this up because I wanted to say to you that when we decided to go into Africa, we had to be started off in Nigeria. Because I'm a Nigerian, I thought, you know, we need to go into Nigeria. We need to go and launch what we're doing. We need to get Nigerians to understand, Africans to understand what this could do, not only for their community, but even for themselves as entrepreneurs and, as, and in terms of looking at economic growth and the manufacturing industry. I would say, sadly, to some degree, we didn't quite get it. We didn't quite make it. Perhaps we were a little bit unprepared. We didn't know what to expect. But that experience to me, I think, is it's a worthwhile one because you have to learn from those sort of experiences. By the time we decided to go into, Af into Ghana, we were a lot much more prepared. A lot of people have told me that, um, but why, why are you doing this? Why go into Africa with the word invention? Get rid of that word and just leave innovation. And I said, necessity is the mother of invention. And in Africa, if you've ever had to want something so badly, you will invent. The difficulty, though, is a lot of people don't see what we're inventing. A lot of people don't know about what we're doing. A lot of people don't even know that it's an invention. When you use the word innovation, they don't even know that what they're doing is innovative. So how can we bring that? And I'm really happy to say that Ghana said, Bola, with open arms, come. We want you, we want you to come here. And I'm pleased that 33 countries in Africa, around the world, joined us. I have to, you know, every time I mention this, I have to politically mention the World Bank because, of course, it supported us um, in making sure that happens. But I put this here because we're actually global. I didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to rush into Africa, into Nigeria, Ghana, and start to advocate for inventions and innovations. There was a root, there was a history, there were experiences that I had had to go through and each time Africans, Nigerians especially would say, you're going around the world but have you thought of Africa? Why are you doing this all over the world and you're not coming to Africa? And I kept thinking, I don't know where to start from. These countries that I would go into immediately embraced it. As soon as I spoke about inventions and innovations, they knew exactly, they would throw all the women that had brought up several things, they would put books in front of me, they would shop me to schools, they immediately reciprocated. And I would say, well, forget everything else that you're seeing, I thought from the pictures, again, just so that you can see that um, I'm a picture um, person, and of course I want to share my, picture, my photo album with you. Latin America, the same thing. You will notice that I, I, I put pictures of entertainment in there. And in TED, if you know TED, the E stands for actually entertainment. I am really a lover of entertainment. I like music, anything that's artistic and creative. At the same time, I wanted people to know that we need to share what we know. I really, really am in awe of what you're doing for me, Ada, because you're sharing what you're, what you're captivating every day, and that is knowledge transfer, that is knowledge exchange. Education. Not too long ago, we partnered with a university, London Metropolitan University, and we decided to go into Europe. We decided that it wasn't just about Africa or any other country, it was everywhere. Do you know that only 8.3% in the whole of Europe, only 8.3% women protect their ideas? Forget Africa, because right now we're not talking about Africa, I'm talking about Europe. In the UK, only 2.5% of women protect their ideas. Imagine how remarkably 
creative, innovative, and inventive we are, and yet we don't even think about intellectual property rights? Don't ask me what I mean by that, because I'm sure you know. But protecting those valuable ideas, we don't even think of how we could use it. And this is in Europe. Now think about Africa, where necessity is the mother of invention, where we are having to make do and we're adapting things, we're making gadgets, we're just, we're just getting on with it every single day. Our mothers and grandmothers are finding ways to just make the next day work. Yet, when we talk about the world's greatest inventions and innovations, I don't think you're going to see any of our faces there. We've almost become invisible. So why is it so important? Women face challenges all over the world. I think we have something in common. A lot of the men would say, but so do we. I agree. But I'm passionate about women. I'm a woman and I know through my experience that some of the things that we go through, perhaps maybe the men are still playing catch up in terms of trying to get, go through those experiences. So I'm an advocate for women and trying to ensure that the men support us in what we're trying to achieve. Because it's not just about women, it's about the whole family. From childcare, anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where we, where we are, whether it's in Africa or here, caring responsibilities, pay gaps, access to finance, access to the right kind of information, and an extra raft of challenges. But you know one thing I found in common in every single country that I went to? This thing about technology, high technology, it's got to be this wonderful new gadget that's so up there. But the reality is that a majority of women come up with low technology. Low technology with high viability. The textile industry. The food industry. Do you know the woman that won the Nigerian Women Inventor, Innovator of the Year Awards in 2004? Now, do you know Pap Ogi? This woman came up with this nice, beautiful breakfast cereal. If you don't know it, then obviously you're not, you can't be an African. I may not be saying the right um, word for it in your country, but I think every African country has this cornmeal um, ogi that we have. So that's not an invention. But what's innovative about this woman is she had to find a way to feed her children. She couldn't afford all the SMAs and the, all the wonderful um, European westernized kind of soup, um, baby cereals that were out there. She fed them with ogi. But she had to make it innovative and attractive to them. So she started giving it flavors. Banana flavor, coconut flavor, orange flavor, spices, different flavors. Her children would go to school and they would say, what did they have for, Christmas, uh, for breakfast this morning? And they would, everybody would come up with so, so many wonderful things that they've had. And then they would say, you know, we had banana flavor ogi. They were superstars. Before you knew it, people were queuing up in her small room to buy that ogi from her. She became entrepreneurial. In fact, I would say she's worldwide known now because I believe that what my mission is is to put visibility on this woman, to let people see what can be achieved through your imagination and through entrepreneurship. It hasn't been easy. I put that there to remind myself about the tyranny of the comfort zone. In Africa especially, when you come up with something that's new, that's different, People really want to stay in their comfort zone. They're not really quite sure where you, what you're talking about. And, you know, if you st start stretching too much, how's that going to affect us? Are we going to make any money immediately? What's this all about? How's it going to affect the family, the women? And all sorts of thoughts start going through your mind. And my experience has been that sometimes some organizations and some people actually panic because you're bringing change. You're bringing something new, and not everybody adapts or welcomes change. So what do we look for? In Africa especially, we're constantly looking for people who are different. They will have one thing in common, tenacity. They will have the determination to succeed against all odds. Commitment, 
and they will have that extraordinary potential. I use the word potential because many of them haven't even achieved what they're trying to achieve. They're not there yet, but we're trying to do everything we can to get them that visibility and that support that's needed. Positive influence, transcending borders, something that can contribute to the future of life on Earth. I wouldn't want to say that it's been easy, that we could do it alone. I'd like to say that let's just forget the government and just go into Africa and every African country and just sort it out. But through my experience, I've realized that it is necessary to involve the government. That's what they're, for, they're there for. And although it's been very difficult trying to get through the doors, I cannot begin to tell you my experience in Nigeria. And if there's anybody still here that can open those doors, please, I'd like to see you later on. <laughs> because I have to say that I couldn't open the doors in my own country. But I'm also pleased, I don't want to start here and tell you that it was all bad news, because I'm pleased to say that we did get into to South Africa. That's my little photograph there, if you don't know the one woman in the white dress there. I'm showing off a little here, because it's not every day you get to see the Prime Minister or the President of the country and get something done. And of course, the President of um, Senegal, Wade, we opened those doors because they supported us, they believed it, and they saw what it would do to their country and the economic growth and the social growth of their country. Of course, when you have that, it should snowball. 1,500 women in South Africa, from all over Africa, with the support of the South African government, 2008, May. Even when I walked into the room, I said to myself, oh my God, what have I got myself into? They were writing, they, were, they had different sorts of businesses. All they wanted was the knowledge. They didn't say, come and give us the money, come and support us, come to my village, come and... No, just give us the information, tell us what we need to do, how can we be better? How can we get that creative idea out there? And how can people know that we were the ones who gave birth to this idea? Not someone in America, not someone who had all the funds to be able to get it out there, but we struggled, we had that experience, and we are the brains behind this. From intellectual property to product development to access to finance, just name it, we went from one topic to the other. I put that there because I had originally said, mentioned how important it is for us to have the government involved. But I'm not, I wouldn't really say that term. I, I think I'm a realist. I'm not going to get every African country to support what we're standing for. So what else is available? What about those who are in education? I hate to fail. I have to learn when I have done something wrong. So I had to go back to that original place that I had started from in Africa, Nigeria. This time I wasn't going to go knocking on the government doors, not that I don't want to, but how about if I start off with the education? Yaba College of Technology. Managed to get to see the rector, managed to say, look, you're about technology, you do all sorts of things. Inventions and innovations is something you should be looking at. I'm pleased to say that after speaking to the students and doing all sorts of talks, they decided to support the idea. Yaba College of Technology has been with us for the past five years. They have joined us in South Africa, they joined us in Mexico, in Germany, in Finland, and also here in the UK. And they've been watching, they've been taking note of what we've been doing. And because we saw that there was that commitment and dedication to see what they could do as an institution, educational institution, we thought we should acknowledge them. Of course we give awards to uh, women that are doing wonderful work, and of course men as well. But we said, we said no, we need to show that education is one route that we should not underestimate. So of course we invited the rector and his staff to join us in Cardiff this year and acknowledge them in front of all the UK um, audiences that were there and said a little bit about what they had done and continue to do to support us in working in Nigeria. 
our continuous development is still the fact that it's, it's not easy. The challenges are always there. It is a platform where we're continuously using it as a vehicle to do some outreach work, to connect with people who can help us to open those doors. The flexible learning opportunities, because we know that the people who actually have those great ideas may not necessarily be found in, the, in these sort of, sort of places. They probably will be found in the kind of work that you're doing. The work where they haven't got all the jigsaws, but they've got something to start with. We know that what they've got can compete at glo in a global environment. I'm pleased to share with you that not too long ago I was made a senior uh, TED fellow. And one of the key things that I wanted to see was how TED was going to assist us in assisting these women and men, and I'll talk to you about, a little bit about the men in, mo in a moment, in ensuring that it doesn't just stay within their small community, but they get visibility outside the country and globally. I think we should give credit where it's due. Enough is enough. Our ideas, our values, people need to understand that they are our values and they are our creativity and innovation. And we need to start blowing our own trumpets, putting our names behind those fantastic, wonderful things, that we, remarkable innovations and inventions that we bring to not just our own economy but to the world. I'm going to just sort of end up by saying that, yes, we are going back to Nigeria, the very same place that we didn't quite make it the first time. We're going to be back there in June. We're going to look at the beauty of innovation, technology and enterprise in Africa. It's going to be for both men and women. We've partnered with an organization called African Gems Initiative. And what they're doing is just unearthing African treasures. The sort of things that you probably wouldn't even know existed within Africa. We're going to put the spotlight on it, and we would like the world to know about it. So I hope that I haven't bored you too much with um, inventions and innovations. I hope that I have at least stimulated your appetite to want to learn a little bit more about what we do and my journey to getting here. So please do keep in contact, and thank you very much.